say we talk about filial piety, how does it look like in Chinese? In Chinese characters, filial piety or xiao in pronunciation is a symbol. So every Chinese character is a symbol. So what did symbol comprise of? Elder, a symbol of elder on the top and symbol of young at the bottom. Elder and young, when you combine them, means elder generation and younger generation, if they are one, it's what we call filial piety. The elder were at both on, on top. All right. Uh, it's not about, it, we're not talking about the Lao Tzu in Taoism. <laughs> we're talking about combination of these two words. It's called filial piety. And this is where this word xiao in Chinese came from. So if we want to go further with the meaning, half a uh, generations, elder generations, younger generations, they are one, one entity. They cannot be separated. You cannot be separated from your own parents. You cannot be separated from your own ancestors. And that's the original meaning of filial piety, Xiao. That's why the patriarch of Buddhism told us that the elder generations have their own elder generations. That means the past has no beginning. There's no origin. There's endless beginning. The younger generations have their own younger generations. There are no end for the next generation who will be infinite. So how can it be separated? Beginning and end are one. So no matter what situation is the relationship is between you and your elders, your parents, the relationship is there. You cannot be separated. No matter good or bad. For example, when I met someone in the past, he told me he hates his parents, his father, sorry, he hates his father. Uh, I really hate him. But I told him, no matter how much you hate him, the fact is he is your father. For example, on the other hand, your children, no matter how much you dislike your children, uh, or because maybe they are not being uh, you know, good or, or something like that, they are still your children. This thing cannot be separated. In Buddhism, filial piety, we have other words for it. If you perfect the filial piety, it becomes dharmakaya, or body of the truth, the body of the truth. What does it mean for us? If you want to be pure land, born in pure land, if you want to be liberated from sufferings, if you want to sever the uh, cause of life, uh, recycle, uh, reincarnation, uh, or anything in the worldly phenomena, and anything that happens in the world, uh, born from Dhammakaya, arise from this body of truth. And what does this Dhammakaya, uh, if you crystallize into a value, it call, it's called filial piety. For example, Buddha of the past, present, future, and of the ten directions, they have attained Buddhahood, that means perfection of virtues. Um, some haven't, even, haven't reached yet, because future, right? Future Buddha. But each of them, no matter where they are, when they are, when they want to begin this journey towards Buddhahood, they begin with filial piety, Xiao. So why? Because uh, Buddha will always want to help all beings, just like being filial piety towards all beings, treating everyone like their parents. This is the heart of Buddha. If you're not being filial piety, could you even get anywhere in Buddhism? Say Amitabha Buddha. He's now already a Buddha. Even when he's a Buddha, he is still continuing the practice of filial piety. To whom? To all of us, to all beings. 
is he keeps giving and helping and take caring of all beings. That's filial piety, love and respect. So we need to know filial piety is the ship that carries Buddha to the Buddha. If you you born in this world with fortunes into a fortunate family. What do they rely on? What, where did this merit came from? Philippi. So, if you take back, uh, go back to Siddhikapa Bodhisattvas, what is the special part about uh, his symbol? Um, in the sutra about him, uh, the most unique part, the excellent part of him, is he started his act of Philippi from his mother. So he, he, the first person he feel piety towards is his mother. So, for example, nowadays we always have Mother's Day, right? No matter what country you are, you always have Mother's Day. Uh, Mother's Day are relatively uh, not as popular as Mother's Day, right? Why? Because mothers um, virtue towards us. The kindness they gave it to us is immeasurable. For us is immeasurable. First thing is the, the virtue or the kindness of giving birth to us, keeping us in, into this world. So if you read the sutra of the parents, uh, how hard it is to repay the kindness to the parents. Um, Buddha has a description, no matter how much no matter how you repay their kindness, you still cannot reach full repayment to them. And that means a, a parent, a mother especially, uh, how respectful they should be, like how we should respect full to that them because of their kindness. In Siddhikabha Sutra, there are two famous story tales that represent this value. First one is Brahman woman. Second one is bright eyes, uh, the woman with the bright eyes. These are all about his past life, where he saved his mom, her, her mom, back then he is a lady, her mom. And um, her mom, both both these ladies, their mom uh, committed negative karma and born in the three world realms. And when they know, when this past life of Siddhikapa Bodhisattva knows that their, his mother is suffering, he immediately, uh, I mean, he used a lot of energy trying to get them back to the norm, uh, to the tree higher rim. It's very uh, touching and very sincere. Like Brahman woman, because in order to save his mom to reborn in the better realms, she willing to she's willing to sacrifice her life. Uh, other than that, she also helped the Triple Gem, uh, built the Buddha uh, Tower, helped the poor. Uh, all this merit dedicated to her mom, so that her mom can be born in the better realm. Uh, all she can think about is to repay the kindness to her mom. And knowing her mom falling into the lower realm, is she's feeling uh, urgent, like very, very desperate to help her. Same goes for the bright eyes. To find people like that right now, in our society, is, it's rare. It's very rare. Therefore, we need to uh, rely on ourselves. Uh, it's very rare to find people like this. So, in the in the end, what we need to bring home is we need to rely on yourself. All right, break all the evils, deeds, and do all the good deeds, so that in the very least, even you did not manage to go to pure land, you're not falling into three lower realms. Who wants to go there? Who wants to be an animal, a ghost, or a healthy beings? Let's not talk about the three lower realms. Even now here, who wants to go and uh, be suffered? Who wants to take suffering upon themselves?